investigative experience as a captain in the U.S. Army Military Police. Uh, she served with the Criminal Investigator Division and as a Special Agent in the Department of Treasury and U.S. Customs Service. Uh, she, as a Special Agent, uh, fought on the front lines of the drug war. Uh, she was assigned to four separate high-level narcotics and money laundering task force. Uh, she also served as, as a Department of Treasury augmentee on personal protection details with Bill and Hillary Clinton. Um, um, she also protected Bob Dole, the Israeli Prime Minister, and many other heads of state. Uh, she now works as a defense investigator on felony cases. Uh, Darlene has testified both federal and state courts as an expert witness for both prosecution and defense teams. Uh, she has a BS degree in criminal justice, justice from Eastern Kentucky, uh, where she also, also graduated from the EKURTC pro program. She has a master's degree in secondary education, her, and her, her Jewish doctorate is in law. So she's an attorney, just as past the bar, I guess. And you haven't taken the bar, have you? No, I don't, I don't, I don't work as a lawyer. I have a law degree. I work as an investigator. I don't blame you a bit. It was it's a law degree. That's a very contentious. <laughs> Profession. Most investigators never oh, yeah. As a national security whistleblower and as a special agent, Darlene exposed high level corruption in her former agency. Darlene has given live testimony before the U.S. Congress and the U.S. Senate. Her written testimony was submitted before the 9 11 Commission. I personally have seen her work on other situations. Uh, every county that she goes into and tries, she leaves them in a better condition. She, she uh, an hour. Well, uh, I'm a member also of this group it's called uh, Truth of Politics, and our whole um, intent is to uh, help our communities. Uh, we want to reduce any type of corruption we can find. Uh, we want, if, if uh, money's changing hands that there's not any accounting for, we'd like to expose that to the public. We, our whole intent is to expose the public to the public the truth about what is going on. We never say or do anything that is not documented to the nth degree. We won't bring anything to anybody's attention that we don't first document to the nth degree. We make sure we have documents proving what we say is true first. And today, we have a whole pile of those laying right there. If anyone wants to look at them, we're examining and see what, what we're saying is the truth. And it is the truth. We we're very concerned about this water thing. So if you would, learn the price. Can everybody hear me without this? Okay. I'm gonna, I forgot my glasses. I don't have a reading glass myself, but I just want to read this. This is this is the current KRS statute. No person shall directly or indirectly throw, drain, or otherwise discharge into any of the waters of the Commonwealth or cause or permit to suffer to throw or drain or otherwise discharge into such waters any pollutant, any pollutant or any substance that shall cause or contribute to the pollution of the waters of the Commonwealth in contravention of the standards assigned by the, I'm surprised I can see this, by the cabinet and the, and the conservatives of any of the rules, regulations, permits, and the orders of the cabinet or contra in the contravention of any of the provisions of this chapter. So, and I'm not the poison lakes, rivers, and streams, period, end of story. There's a KRS statute. Okay. So when we first started Truth of Politics 12 years ago, first we started in McCurry County. We now have a team up here in Plasky County that, and he gives me a lot of credit. Believe me, there's a lot of work that goes into this that I have other people helping me. So I'm not like the Lone Ranger or something. We have some really good team. We have a team over in Louisville doing some amazing stuff, and, and they've got a podcast over there. Um, we got a team in McCurry County. We got some folks in uh, Whitley County. We're starting one up in northern Kentucky, there's a whole group up there, because they saw what we've done. And basically we use a tool called the Open Records Request, and we hit different agencies with the Open Records Request. You should be very concerned about that right now because your legislature, current legislature, is trying to get rid of that because they don't like truth upon and, and our in fact our organization was mentioned on Frank on um, in Frankfurt. They don't like what we're doing. They don't like getting exposed. So um, you need to be very cautious about that. And you know these these legislatures that are up there voting to limit your public rights to your records. You taxpayers pay for these records. So that's your records. These should be public records. Um, you should be very aware of that. When I first I 
learned about this we two years ago we had a meeting there was a little organization i forget what the name of them is a group of people concerned citizens said hey we saw what you guys did in these other counties would you come up here so i came and did a dog and pony show to these citizens afterwards some some little old guy came up to me and he told me this story that hey the somerset wastewater treatment plant is in violation they've been in violation by the way there's stacks of them here some of these all the way up through may 2021 and e coli is getting in the you know getting in these you know uh, suspended solids is getting they're getting through it's even overflowing several times it's overflowed not even gone through the system directly into sinking creek which just goes in the pit creek which goes in the lake commonly and it's really really bad they know this treatment plan is defective and yet these city officials decided gee the state of uh, kentucky has not done anything to us for six years they threatened and you can see these violations there's stacks of them i put some of them through 2021 in these packets these violations are so serious that they threatened to find them $25,000 a day per event. Now these threats came on a month, almost on a monthly basis, over and over again. Your E. coli levels are off. Your, you know, your this is off. Your nitrogen levels are way off. Um, your system's broken. Obviously, there's something wrong here. So what did they decide to do? Well, let's bring in, and now it looks like it, it's at least 30 million gallons of this stuff called leachate from industrial waste landfills and contrary to what the mayor says yes these are industrial waste landfills don't take my word for it you guys don't know me from anybody i've given you the packets i've got a, a photocopy some of their facebook pages or their websites all you got to do is type in republic waste uh, you know landfill tennessee go to their website do your own research it says what they take they take demolition waste, industrial waste, asbestos. It lists what they take. These four landfills are industrial waste landfills. Okay, why is that problem? These landfills are notorious for having fluorocarbons. Okay, what is a fluorocarbon? All right, I, I, and, I, and I know in the movie, I cover this in the movie, and we go into a lot of detail, and, and there's no other way, you can't get around the science, okay? How many people have seen the movie Air Rock Bitch? Okay. That was hexavalent chromium. That's bad. Okay. That's bad. Our state standards here for testing for hexavalent chromium suck. Okay. They just do. They don't require municipalities or anybody else to test enough. Now, you are required to test for C6, but not enough, in my opinion. You know, how many people here think that once a year testing for poison is enough <laughs> testing? That, you know, it's not. Okay, C8 is literally a thousand times worse. What is C8? There was a company called 3M back in the 60s, 70s. 3M had military contracts to come up with this Frankenstein chemical called C8. First it was C4, and then now you got C6, C8. What is C8? It is a fluorocarbon that is deadly. It is in the laboratory. They stacked eight carbons and then added a bunch of fluorocarbons to it. Okay, I'm not a scientist, but you can research this yourself. Okay, carbon in nature, you know, one carbon, what it is, it exists in nature, it's fine. You mix carbon with oxides and stuff like carbon monoxide, you know, that's not fine. <laughs> C8 is deadly. It is. It's carcinogenic. Here's what happened. 3M, people started dying in their labs, just handling this stuff. You know, it, it, it's that deadly. 3M, they get rid of it. They're like, we got to get rid of this. Let's sell it to the military. <laughs> so they do. They do a dog and pony tote show to the military because it really does work for to cover things like tanks, stuff like that up. Uh, how many people here have heard Scotch Guard? Scotch Guard, where's Scotch Guard? Try to find Scotch Guard now. You can't because it's carcinogenic. They've had multiple lawsuits. So DuPont steps up and they buy this. DuPont starts, let's bring it into the household all across the United States. So 
Uh, how many people here have heard about all the Teflon lawsuits? Teflon's poison. That's C8. That's a fluorocarbon. They're also called PFOs, PFOAs, C8. This stuff is deadly. So, DuPont's manufacturing plant for this stuff was in West Virginia. DuPont basically poisoned all the lake rivers and streams in West Virginia. They got sued into oblivion. Three separate juries and three separate lawsuits uh, ordered DuPont to pay millions, millions of dollars to plaintiffs who would suffer from liver damage, you name it, all the cancers that go with this stuff. Through these lawsuits, it was declared in, by law in these lawsuits that the standard for C8, for testing C8, is seven parts per trillion. That's important, seven parts per trillion. Why is that? That's the equivalent to seven grains of sand and an Olympic size swimming pool. Why is that important? E. coli and suspended solids are measured in parts per million. Now, it doesn't take a math major to know if from 20, and I want to look back to 2016, from 2016 to May 2021, if E. coli is getting in, and there's some of these, these um, violations, it's like 10 times the allowable E. coli. The state is, you know, threatening Somerset, you know, you're poisoning Pitney Creek. You know, we're going to find you. They never did find them. Never did give them one fight. But, but if E. coli and suspended solids are getting through, parts per million, something smaller is getting through, right? I mean, does anybody want to argue that point? I mean, that don't take a scientist or, you know, a math major to figure that out. So these four landfills have all of the waste that carry C8. And if you, if you research C8, all, again, Google, don't take my word for it, Google, PFOs, PFOAs, and C8. Look what they have, they put it on, auto parts, that kind of thing. Think about what's in these landfills, tires, demolition waste. Demolition waste is some of the most toxic stuff there is, okay? C8's loaded in these landfills. So what leachate is, is landfills, it rains, right? The rain runs through, and then you have the liquid that comes out. That liquid is so toxic, it's highly controlled. You, and these landfills, by the way, to have, in order to have an industrial waste landfill, you have to have an industrial waste permit. You gotta jump through a bunch of hoops to get these permits, right? As you should. And to carry this leachate off in a tanker truck, Okay, this sludge or whatever you want to call it, you have to have an industrial waste permit. Guess what kind of permit the city of Somerset wastewater treatment has had for the last 12 years? Anybody want to guess? A general permit. I've got it right there if anybody wants to see it. They don't even have an industrial waste permit to run industrial waste through their defective plant. That's the problem. Okay, and I know I sound, I sound like I'm beating up on Somerset. Okay. The problem really is bigger. Our state government and our state waste, our, our, our water department, our state state water district, they're the Kentucky State Water District and our state EPA, they don't give a crap. They're not, they didn't do anything in Somerset, and Somerset is just one municipality that's doing this, okay? We have state lawmakers that are just idiots that don't care. We have a governor, I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of this governor, who doesn't care. They've known about this for a while. Type in Google, again, you don't know me, do your own research. Type in Kentucky water, lake waters, rivers, and streams, and C8, or PFOAs. There's been, there has been three separate research organizations that I had nothing to do with, nothing to do with, separate from me that have come into the Kentucky and have tested the lakes, rivers, and streams of Kentucky for this PFOA C8. One of them has absolutely concluded that 67% of all lakes, rivers, and streams in Kentucky are contaminated with this, this deadly stuff, and it is toxic. Another one tested some of the drinking waters, and 90% of the drinking waters in Kentucky is contaminated. And there was a third one, I forget what the percentage is. This stuff's deadly. 
Don't take my word for it. Please research PFOAs, PFOs, C8 yourself. Do your homework. Jury after jury that people have sued that that are getting sick from this. Every time a lawsuit ensues, Dupont. I think about how, how big Dupont was back then. This is back in the uh, late seventies or well, actually the eighties. It took like twenty years to get this thing to a lawsuit. Think about how much money Dupont had to fight this. They had a whole law firm to fight this, and all three juries found Dupont guilty of poisoning West Virginia and and gave them billions of dollars of fines or you know punitive damages for poisoning West Virginia with C8. That's how deadly this stuff is. And like I said, through those lawsuits is where they said DuPont actually set the standard for the testing. Problem is, a lot of municipalities, and this is one of them, they're not testing for C8. Um, what what the mayor, the mayor's doing the oldest trick of the book, the old bait and switch. He, you know, when he talked to the paper, he said, oh, we're testing for C6. We're testing for it. You know, we're, we meet all state standards. Okay? He told the truth, though. That's not what I asked him for. That's not what we told him in person we were concerned about. He knows the concern, and he avoids it. He does the bait and switch. He will not talk about C8. He will not talk about these PFOAs. These things are called forever chemicals for a reason. They do not break down. They cause every kind of cancer known to mankind or horrible. The problem is, too, well, this ain't Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What happens in Pittman Creek is going to flow downstream. And Pittman Creek flows into Lake Cumberland, which flows into the Cumberland River, all the way down to Nashville. Obviously, I know I sound like I'm just picking on this mayor and, and Somerset. I'm not. This is a big problem statewide. Our state lawmakers should have a long time ago, because they've known about this, and if they didn't know, they should know, and they do know about it. This state water district knows about this, and they are doing nothing about it. I have challenged them. I've challenged them. And I even have an email from Robin, uh, what's her name? Robin something. Anyway, I've got her email there. And all these documents, by the way, on truth. We did a movie or a little documentary called They Come Them What Really Lies Beneath. It's part one, part two. Go to YouTube. Every one of those documents, we pull up, you can see it yourself, and you can read it. We got an email from Robin, I can't remember her last name, telling the head of the waste treatment plant, Dana White is here in Somerset, no, we're not testing for PFOAs. You have no requirement to test for them, and we're not going to. You know, <laughs> they may as well have said, we don't care that everybody, we have a huge cancer rate in this area, and we don't care that PFOAs may be causing it, we're not going to stop industry from polluting your wastewaters, rivers, and streams. I mean, that, to me, that's the message that your lawmakers are, ma are making at the state level. I also want to address another issue because um, it, it's been brought up that we just we just brought this out because it's an election year. If you could, can I interject something? Well, let, let me make this point real quick. We started this two years ago. We would have been done eight months ago, and I am going to throw this elected official under the bus. Or he's, yeah, he is an elected official under the bus. Your city attorney, and I, and I, and I'm very comfortable saying this because I got a series of emails that you will see in this movie. He jerked us around for eight months and would not pop up these documents. Finally, after we went to the attorney general's office and they assigned an assistant attorney general, and I've got those emails too. You'll see them in the movie, telling him, you know. Pretty much, you better cough these up. Magically, the, the documents started flowing. We would have been done with this eight months ago. That's number one. Number two, I don't know Mayor Keck. You know, first time I ever met him when he walked up me, to me two Fridays ago, I didn't know who he was. And I don't care. And I'm going to tell you what I told him to his face. You know, he said, well, my opponent used to miss and get me. And I said, I don't care. I don't care about your election. I don't care who's the mayor here. Right now, you're the mayor. What are you going to do? So. I, I, just, I don't, I don't care, no offense, I mean, not that I don't care, but, you know, but we didn't do this about an election. It just is, it, it, it's a much bigger problem that everyone should be aware of, 
and everyone should be calling their, especially now, their state reps and their state senators and saying, I want a law passed. I want everybody to start checking for, the, for these PFOAs. Okay, now, I hit an open records request repeatedly from the water district here and the drinking water district people here. I want to see your test for PFOAs. They have coughed up zero documents. Zero. So when the mayor says, we're testing, we're testing, and I keep asking them, where? Show me the records. And then other people are saying, show us the documents. Show me one test for C8. And they get to do it. So um, they're not. They're simply not testing for C8. Um, and there's a lot of municipalities, and I'm very proud of what little, little Prairie County is. It doesn't cost that much to test for this stuff. So why they're not testing for it, go ask them. Um, you know, and then Dan was there. We had several witnesses there. The witnesses a little back and forth between me and the mayor. I had to explain to him what CA was. He didn't know what it was. He didn't know what these PFOAs were. So they're not testing. Here's the other point. He's trying to project that there's nothing wrong here. Our system's working. Everything's fine here. Well, really? Then why are you asking the taxpayers for $10 million plus interest to fix your broke your broken uh, waste treatment plant. And he has put that, that's his words. He has, in an article to the Commonwealth Journal, we're working on it, we're, drunk, we're fixing it. We're, the, we're, we're going in debt $10 million. Okay, well, if your system's not broke, you don't need $10 million to fix it. That should tell you something right there. You know, Houston, we got a problem, a $10 million problem, plus interest, okay? So, um, just want to bring those points up. Dan, you had a question or anybody? I'll take questions. Uh, I just want to tell you something I'm very important on. Uh, we originally, we, we have no agenda at all other than that we are concerned about our communities. That's all we do. Nobody gets paid to do anything in this group. Uh, what we do, we only do out the concern for the citizens of where we live. And we had no aim to hurt Somerset in any shape or fashion. We first called and ask the city hall if we could make an appointment to see Mayor K. They said, sure, come on down. So we went down to the office. She and I. We went in and they said, well, he's not in today, you'll have to make another appointment. So we said, okay, let's make an appointment. So they did. And we left and we came back on the day that they said for the appointment. When we got there, we were ushered into a room. With, with the, the city, city attorney. attorney. <laughs> with the city attorney. We didn't necessarily want We had no problem. We thought we were going to work together to try to fix this, what we perceived as a, a terrible problem for the, for the county. And so we had no intent at all of in, even involving the city in any publicity whatsoever. We just wanted to inform him and hope, hopefully that he would take some action to either help our concerns, inform us, more great that maybe it wasn't happening, or uh, do some corrective action or something. None of that happened. We were held off and weren't given the information. This attorney kept us off for months and months and months. In fact, we asked the city attorney. We don't have anything against the city of Somerset. We love it. That's why we do this. We're doing this because we care about this place. We even asked the city attorney, though, well, why, why can't we sit down with the mayor? And he goes, and he said, I'm going to advise the mayor at this point not to sit down with you, not to meet with you. And we didn't see the mayor until the big political gathering down there on the square, down there at the farmers market. That's the first time we ever spoke to us about this. And we saw the person who were there with cameras. Let me ask you something. Sure. Oh, it's 30 million gallon. It's already went in. And it's probably going in right now. Yeah. Uh, how long will that stay in that water if we stop it now? Years. 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 Uh, the DuPont situation, if you look at the, I, here's what here's what I did. One of the reasons I really got concerned about this is when I heard this story and I started getting some of those documents about E. coli and stuff, and it didn't hit me. I had just, my husband and I had just been pulling our grandkids and our daughter and our son behind our boat in Pittman Creek. And my husband saw those and I'm like, oh my God, we've poisoned our kids, our grandkids. 
So I brought in some experts too. I, guys, I didn't know what a PFO was. I didn't know what C8 was. I didn't know. I knew hexavalent chromium because I watched Aaron Brockovich. I didn't know what any of this stuff was, and quite frankly, I didn't give a crap. Okay. <laughs> you know, it just when the guy first came up and told us this, I thought he was nuts. Had another person that was in a position to know, and, and we've got insiders. I'm just, I'm just telling you right now, we've got confidential sources and insiders that are giving us information that just makes my skin crawl, to be quite honest, and I can't expose who these people are. I don't want to lose their jobs. What I did is I, I, I just, I just I, I'm an investigator. That's what I've done for almost 40 years now. Um, I started really investigating this because I was really worried about my grandkids, me, um, I, I had gotten sick and I thought it was related to this. It, it's not, has nothing to do with it, I don't think. But, um, so I came, became concerned. I literally drove to Cincinnati and met with the law firm and the attorneys there. I got to look at some of the documents in the DuPont case. And the more I learned about C8 and these PFOAs, the more alarmed I became. And then when I started doing battle with the state of Kentucky through these open records requests and these emails I'm getting back, tell them we don't care about, we're not testing for C8. We're not requiring any of these municipalities or anybody to test their effluent for C8 in the state of Kentucky. That should scare everybody's pants off. Once you, again, you don't know me for Adam. Do your own research on this stuff. When you research what this is, and many states have passed laws now because they're getting sued. Lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit, they're losing. These companies are losing, um, and they're finding in these lawsuits, CH deadly, it, it poisoned these people, and you're going to pay for it. So two Fridays ago when we were face-to-face -face with Mary, he asked me, he goes, well, what do you want? I said, stop bringing this stuff in. Until you get your system fixed, stop bringing it in. You only make a $200,000 a year. I mean, not my words, his words. You know, he committed to that, right? They're making a big whop of $200,000 a year. What, to potentially? Why would you take that risk? Why on earth would anybody take a risk like that, bring an industrial waste, waste, put it through a system that is obviously broken, 20 or $10 million worth of broken, uh, the state of Kentucky have repeatedly told them it's broken. Why would you take that risk? You know, just stop it. Stop bringing this stuff in. Number one, start testing for PFOAs. Start testing for CA. And, and he, he goes, well, if I consider that, what would you do? And did I not tell him this day? And I said, if you do that, I'll hold a press conference. I'll shake your hand. I'll make a hero out of you. That you went above and beyond the call of duty to protect your citizens and you're going to stop bringing this stuff in out of abundance of caution and you're going to start testing for C8. We all know that water flows downstream. Period. If it's in Pitman Creek, it's eventually going to be in the intake of our drinking water system. Yeah, that thing goes right to it. Because I've worked with water company for 30 years. I've been on the city council 18. I had no idea about all this stuff. Now, he said we had a uh, some kind of a Special meeting. The film shows me sentiment, but what he said about it, I didn't catch it about this CH. We change. We change. No, he's never mentioned CH. And yeah. I was sitting there as a water purveyor for 30 years. I would have said, hell no, in a heart. Right. I'm sorry, but I said, no way. The only, the only, here, here's what they pulled, and this is what concerns me about down the ropes, people are sick and him. And then if a class action does ensue, okay? And I'm sure the lawyer told them to do this, okay? In a meeting, a couple of, before 2019, when they were making the announcement to, to, that they were going to bring this leachate, this, this is what they told the public. And it was on page four. And that's not the Commonwealth Journal's fault, okay? Um, he said, yeah, we're going to bring in this stuff called leachate. We can bring it, you know, we can make it, you know, two or $300,000. Um, from, some, from a landfill, landfill. He, they did not tell the public, A, we're bringing it in from four different landfills, two of them in Tennessee. B, at this point, over 30 million gallons. C, these are industrial waste landfills. None of that was ever told to the public. Also, these violations, forget about the leachate for a minute, these violations, 
Some of these E. coli levels are so high and the nitrogen levels are so bad, and this is the state of Kentucky writing this up. There should have been notices out to the public. Pittman Creek should have been shut down. That's what my experts are telling me. None of that was done. How do I know? I hit, I hit the uh, health department up with an open records request. I showed them, were you ever notified of any of this? The health department response back, and you'll see that if you go and watch the movie, just look at all the documents. We have no documents conducive to your request. In other words, nobody ever told us nothing about nothing. You know, I even asked the mayor, didn't I? I said, dude, did you ever think before you started bringing this in and made that decision to go to the health department? You know, I didn't say this, but I'm thinking, the people with the experts, the people, you know, with the ology degrees, did you ever think the taxpayers pay for a health department? Did you ever go to the health department and ask them, what's in this leachate? Is this a good idea to bring this in? And he goes, and his answer was, well, the health department has nothing to do with us. I'm like, I, I got real frustrated real quick with this guy. really get a good look at what's going on. Question. DuPont is the DuPont. The big, they can paint everything. Yeah, the, 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 the big DuPont company. They got major stuff. What about the Corps of Engineers? They sponsor that lake. They take care of that lake. I mean, you can't do anything on a lake unless they're aware of it. Has anybody ever talked to them? I, mean, like, I have not. I have not. That said. Is I mean, that, that's the brass. And they, I mean, they're feds. Here's they what I did. Yeah. yeah, they uh, would be. This whole thing, the movie that you're going to, I hope you guys go watch it. Please go watch it. It's, again, it's called Lake Carmelon, What Really Lies Beneath, Part 1 and Part 2. Um, I took all these documents and the movie Part 1 and Part 2. I put it on two thumb drives. And months ago, I sent this to the federal EPA with a letter, here's my concerns. And the federal EPA, I worked for the federal government for 20 years, and, you know, I will be surprised if the federal EPA come in, comes in and does anything, okay? I, I, I just think, here's what they did, they expected the states to pass laws. That's what they did. But if you go on, you want to get scared, go to the federal EPA's website and they'll tell you all about C8, how deadly it is. The federal EPA. Why has our federal government passed a federal law about this? Again, clean house, I'm telling you. We need term limits like nobody's business at the federal level. <laughs> because they're all bought off by these companies. On midnight one night, three of us did. And just to work, uh, verify the facts. And when that started, when they started coming to Pitt Creek, it looked like a witch's cauldron. It boiled, bubbled, it fell out. It stinks. Uh, it was incredible. A uh, terrible, terrible smell. I understand Ishati smells, but uh, <laughs> this was more than that. And Ishati doesn't make water boil, and this boiled like a witch's cauldron. Mm -hmm. Well, say the tour. Foam anywhere on top of the water. Water was white with foam. Corp engineer, their, their office sits right above, right there above. Uh -huh. That's the first comes out. Well, I, in my opinion, it's all just been being overlooked. Now, that's just my opinion. But uh, it, it doesn't need to be. Uh, well, right, 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 right. Concerned. Yeah. Yeah. For everybody's yes. concerned, we think it should be. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. They call C8. That's what's good. He's like I said, he's going to keep on doing it. And the sad part is, we just can't say what we did. Well, we didn't vote, of course. We did not vote for it. Bring it up. I mean, it, as far as two hundred thousand dollars, that's not dropped the bucket if it you know, to save a life. I mean, so now, and that's what I told him to his face. I said, you know, why would you take a chance with this? Just stop bringing this stuff in. And I would have. Yeah, you know, I know you guys don't know, know me, but I have a pretty good reputation. I would have. I would. You know, our when you go watch the movie, they uh, come. Um, Carmel, what really lies beneath, you'll see that I sat right next to me, the McCrary County water dude, because he showed me. He said, Darlene, I've been worried about this for two years. We started testing for this stuff because it's deadly. And, and so I had him I, I told the mayor, didn't I? I said, I will do the same for you. You stop bringing this in. You start testing for C8. I'll put you on a show right next to me and say, look, he's doing the right thing. Because that's what we want. You know, and not just here. 
here's the problem. Let's say tomorrow the mayor says, okay, I'm going to do the right thing. You know, I hate that woman, but I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to stop bringing this in, and I'm going to start testing for PFOX. That's nice. But if you travel to Russell Springs and sit down at a restaurant and drink the water there, um, guess what? You're drinking PFOX. <laughs> They're not testing for it either. So the state, at the state level, we need something done. And you people can contact your state reps, your state senators, and say, I want this done or else. You know, I'm going to. Well, why, why don't you come to one of the council meetings and plead yeah. your case in front of 12 council people? Well, like I say, I just found out about this problem. That was our original intent, and we thought that would happen if we came to City Hall. Okay. We, we thought that would happen. We had mm -hmm. the best intentions. Well, we, we've got an open yeah. council that citizens yeah. come against. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they uh, the nice our best meeting. And, think you know, some of our council people probably haven't even heard of this. I mean, if you don't look on Facebook, you, you don't. And I just found out about it probably a month or two ago. And, That's me. Uh, He's involved. You know, I mean, I'm all for what's right. If you're all wrong, then forget it. But I want there. the proof. And I think the city needs the proof some way. Uh, you know, like I say, I live on Sinking Creek, which is. That's the worst. Pitman Creek. I know. I, we went there. Uh, yeah. We went there, Sinking yeah. Creek. And the, the gentleman. We interviewed a gentleman, he agreed to go on camera, okay? And him and his brother are sick, their whole families are sick. Um, we got out of the car on Sinking Creek, it about knocked me over. It was that bad. And if you look, and you'll see this in the movie, we show the documents where not only, not only is it not effective going through the whole system and their influence, it is bad. They've had incidences where right, right on Sinking Creek, the, the, the system isn't their, their um, treatment plan is in two parts, okay? Right there in Seeking Creek, they had overflow directly out of it and never even went through the system right in the Seeking Creek. One of the answers back, because every time they would come up with some excuse, State of Kentucky would test and say, you know, bad, 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 bad. We're going to, we, we can find you. You better do something. Come up, you better come up with an answer. And one of the, and every time they had a different answer for why this happened. Okay, and you'll see these in the movie. You'll see it. I read them. I show them to you. Okay, and they're right there if you guys want to look. One of the reasons saying the answers was we had too many car washes this week, and I'm like car wash. There's nowhere to have a car wash anywhere around there. Okay, and <laughs> and there's documentation in these things. That, that was just the lamest the, answer ever. That the membranes are torn. Well, they fixed those. That they can't. They fixed those. They fixed the membranes. Yeah, just recently. Just recently. Okay, but after they fixed the membranes, after they fixed the membranes, because that was one of the answers that the lawyer came back, the city turned, oh, no, it's all fixed now. Membranes are fixed. Really, why are you still getting violated from the state of Kentucky right up through 2021? No, you're not fixed. In fact, the E. coli levels went up once even worse. And I'm like, no, it's not the membranes. I don't know what you're doing. Well, we found out what they were doing. So, I'm sorry, you had a question. Yeah, it was a joke. Oh, go ahead. Has the movie been rated? Oh, no. It's, it's like a, I call it a movie. It's like a documentary. It's a, like a news report. But I should have a question. I'm curious. Yeah. Like, is this leachate a byproduct of like our own city's waste? No. These are garbage going to any of these landfills? I'm just curious. No. These are four landfills. Two of them are in Tennessee. Okay. One of them is over by London, Kentucky. And one of them is up by, uh, where is it? We follow one of them. Uh, yeah, from, uh, up, up near Stanford. Stanford. Yeah, there. Stanford. So, yeah. These are big. These are big. These are specifically permitted to handle industrial waste. Right. Waste. It's very poisonous, very bad waste. And, you know, that's, that's one of the things the mayor has said that's just, I'm sorry, but he's just, I don't know if he's wrong or maybe he's not doing his homework. No, these aren't industrial waste landfills. Don't take my word for it. Look at, when you watch the movie, type in, Google, the names of these landfills, go to their website, it'll say what we accept. So most of them right on the front page, we accept because they're, they're, they're trying to get your business. You know what I mean? They're trying to get you to bring their... Your waste to them. It says we accept industrial waste, demolition waste, asbestos. You know, I mean, how many people want asbestos in your water? Okay, if you don't know anything about PFOAs or whatever, 
I think the word asbestos has been around for a while. I think it is universally known that that stuff is deadly. That stuff is in all four landfills. It is like the fluorocarbons. It doesn't break down. It's going to end up in this leachate. It's coming up here and it's going through this defective system. So if you don't believe about the PFOAs, how do you like asbestos? I mean, you know, that's not good either. So, any more work? Any more questions? I'll try to be as informative as I can in an hour. The, 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 the part two especially, and I know documents are boring, but those documents tell a story. They just do boom, 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 uh, uh, the proof of, of what we're saying. And, you know, and, and I feel bad picking up on, you know, I, I, got, I got families that has businesses here, okay? I do. I care about that. And, and I, I'm not just picking on Somerset. The state of Kentucky is complicit in this. The state of Kentucky should, everybody up there should be fired, if you can fire them, for allowing this to happen and turning a blind eye to it. Any other questions? <laughs> We're here to help. <laughs> you may not know, and this might be, I might actually do my uh, research, but do you know what the process is to like treat or dispose of this, what the normal process is? No, okay, normally here's what happens. That's a good question. Thank you. That's a great question. Here's what normally happens. This leachate that comes out of these landfills, it's loaded up on industrial waste permitted trucks. It goes out to what's called a leach field. These leach fields have to have certi you know, specific certifications. And what's supposed to happen is if you, supposedly if you sprinkle this out over like 500 acres and then the sun hits it and something happens, or I don't know all the science, I mean, it still sounds awful, but, but these leach fields are supposed to be nowhere near any water tables, nowhere near any lakes, rivers, or streams. That's how they normally get rid of leachate from landfills. Why on earth they decided, no, bring it here. <laughs> we want it. We want to make $200,000 a year. Load this stuff up and bring it here. And we'll put it through our defective system. Who, you know, and, and, you know, it just amazes me. He's trying to have it both ways. That, no, everything's fine here. Our system's working good. But give me $10 million plus interest to fix our system. Got a ten million dollar plus interest problem, and you know something's wrong. So, <laughs> so do other uh, wastewater facility treatments take this kind of leachate, or is it like a specific facility? There are wastewater treatment plants that take this leachate. Okay. That's my concern. Uh, and are they doing the same thing? You know, I don't know if there are other treatment plants that are defective. We don't know. The, the, the answer is I don't know. That's hard. But. Yeah, there's no doubt there's some other wastewater treatment plates taking this stuff. Now, hopefully, theirs is not getting that, you know, by the state of Kentucky, but the state of Kentucky didn't do for six years, six years of you're in violation, you're in violation, you're in violation, not one fine. What else are the state of Kentucky doing? Do you think this is the only municipality or, um, or industry getting away with this? Thank you, State of Kentucky. No, obviously not. And th that's the big concern. You know, I, I, I travel, you know, a lot. I go to Western Kentucky and stuff and, and do investigations. I want to I wanna feel like I can sit down at, at a table anywhere in Kentucky and drink something and not know that I'm not drinking, drinking a forever chemical or asbestos or you know, something like that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, we're going to have to do this. The reason we use the library has to close. Thank you guys for all for coming. Appreciate it. Hopefully, hopefully we've been helpful, but if you go seriously, you can get a lot more in depth and see all of those documents and all the proof of what we're saying in our, in that, uh, in our little movie or documentary. They come on what we're really last week. It's on YouTube.